What's up community? This is Jansen. I am the training director here at Loop Community and I wanted to kind of dive into Ableton Live and show you an awesome way to kind of stay organized with some of your music that you have in your system. So a lot of times if you're recording tracks or if you uh, have purchased stuff from Loop Community and you're trying to arrange your file system or even just export things out of Ableton Live, uh, this is a really cool tip on how we just export things out of our Ableton sessions and store them away uh, and archive them. So let's dive right into Ableton and take a look. Cool, so I'm uh, in my arrangement view session here of Ableton Live. I have a song that's called Glory Known. Uh, it's 75 beats per minute in B flat and everything's ready to go. I've checked all my levels. Uh, I've t triple checked everything to make sure that it's all good and in sync, right? We always wanna make sure that, uh, that everything lines up correctly. So if, if you're ready to export, here's how you do it. Uh, start one by one with your stem names and you wanna make sure to rename them exactly how they're gonna be. So this is cues and you can just hit the tab key to rename these. Click, acoustic, background vocals, drums, um, electric one. You can kind of name these how you want. You can put EG1 or whatever. So make sure you just have the numbers in there correctly. <clears throat> it's so important to have these because, you know, if you mislabel something, uh, you know, drum track could turn into a piano and that would be bad very fast. So make sure you're really watching and, and paying attention to uh, exactly what each stem is and that you have it named uh, correctly. So keys, loop, almost done here, perk, Piano, synth bass, and synth lead. I think there's one more. Synth pad. And that's it. Okay, so now that I have all my stems named, uh, you can just kind of go through and check the names, make sure they're spelled correctly. And then you can either go up here to the uh, file button and hit export, uh, or you can have the shortcut key command. I love Ableton because it has a lot of these. So uh, if you're in, you know, just want to get things done quickly, uh, I can just hold shift command R and it'll bring up the export audio video window. And so uh, you can do three options. So this master setting is going to actually collect all the stems together in one audio track and bounce that out as one song. So if you wanted to do it that way, you totally could. Uh, or you can come down here to all individual tracks and that's going to actually bounce individual, you know, cues, click, acoustic. Uh, if you did selected tracks only, that only works if you have uh, certain things selected. So if we selected cues, acoustic, and BGV, and we did that same thing, uh, and I went down here to selected tracks only, it's only going to bounce out the cues, the acoustic, and the background vocals. So that's an option. Uh, but I want to make sure that we bounce everything out uh, like we're supposed to. So we can go to all individual tracks. Uh, it's at 111, the beginning of the song, all the way to the end. And I usually keep the bit depth here at 16 um, and 44.1. That's pretty standard for most of your tracks, professionally even. Uh, sometimes they go to 48 and 24 bit, but 44.1 with 16 bit is totally fine. Um, I keep dithering turned off, and usually this is turned on uh, in Ableton by default, this analysis file. You can just turn that off, and that'll get rid of those ASD files that get copied over when you're exporting things out. Uh, and so at the very bottom here, we can just hit export and it's going to bring up a bunch of things here. So I can just go to my desktop. There's already one here. So I'm just going to make this GK for glory known. And then I'm going to put an underscore and then I'm going to put 75. And that is for the tempo of the song. So if it's, you know, 120 or if it's 70, you can kind of rename that. Make sure you always know that the, the tempo is in the file name so you can quickly uh, see what the BPM is and then another underscore and then I usually put like B flat or whatever the key is I put that in there so the whole goal again is to be organized to let you know what is the song name what's the tempo of the song and what key is it in so you don't want to have to like be playing something and then like break out an app to or a pitch pipe or something to see what key it's in or play a key on a piano you want to just be able to see it know what the tempo is and know what the um, key is and that'll help you out a lot so the last thing I like to do is just maybe keep this uh, underscore and then leave it blank. And it's going to fill in the actual uh, name of the, each stem at the very end of this. So we're going to click Save. And it's going to begin to render the audio at 44.1. Uh, and again, depending on if you're rendering it at 48 
um, or higher, uh, maybe like you're trying to do a program that has FLAC files or something, uh, the higher you go in your rendering for your, for your frame uh, and your bit depth, it's going to be uh, a lot more processing power for your computer. So the lower it is, you lose a little bit of quality, but uh, your computer's able to kind of spit them out faster. So that didn't take too long, it was pretty quick, and then it's just going to go through here and one by one just spit out the stems. This is pretty standard, you'll see this across most of your DAWs, um, but it doesn't take too long. There are a lot of stems here, I think I did 18 totally, uh, in total for my song, so it might take just a second, but um, you know, you can take this moment to go get a quick uh, coffee or something like that, and by the time you come back, all your stems will be bounced out. So now that I'm finished exporting everything inside of Ableton, I'm going to open up a finder window and go to the desktop where they were exported and you can see that all of my files are here. Sometimes it'll export a, 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 uh, an extra file that's just an entire stereo mix of the, of the song. Uh, if you need it, you can keep it, but you can get rid of it if you want to as well. I deleted it and it's in my trash. So once I have all my stems, I'm just going to select all of them. And if I right click, I can actually come down here and compress them into a zip file. And so if you guys are producers for Loop Community or you want to be or you just want to have them in a zip file to kind of compress the size down and stick them on a thumb drive or put them on an external hard drive, this is uh, it saves a lot of space and you, all of your files are in one spot. And uh, usually what I do is I take, uh, while that's kind of bouncing out, I just copy the name of one of the stems and I just paste it in here and remove the stem name and just leave it just like this. So GK for Glory Known, 75 and B flat. And then this, uh, this window will kind of be done in just a few seconds. And now you have a zip file that's, you know, a couple, maybe a couple hundred megabytes that you can put inside of your storage space. And you can keep all your files organized and be able to see the name of the song, the tempo of the song, and the key of the song. And you're ready to go and you don't have any kind of searching around trying to find things. So maybe this has been really helpful for you, how to bounce stems out of Ableton Live and organize them in a way that's very readable and clear to you. And you can use those files to upload to Prime if you want, or Loop Community. And so I, guys, I hope this has been super helpful. I know it's been helpful for me because I, I, I label all my stems this way all the time and I store them myself. So everything's really, really nice and easy to get to. So um, until next time, I hope you guys can just join us again and we'll have some great content coming your way. See ya.